Good morning. Are there any constituency statements by honourable members? I call the member for North Sydney. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. Last month, I was very pleased to be able to host my fourth North Sydney Community Awards at North Leagues Club in Camaray. True heroes are all around us, often working behind the scenes doing extraordinary things for our community, in our schools, sporting clubs, by caring for our environment, or in the service of others, often helping people that they have never met but still care very deeply about. These heroes bring true meaning to the words community, service and achievement. I'm proud to represent a com community where this spirit of volunteering is so strong. At the awards, I was able to recognise the work of over 60 individuals and community organisations. And community group, oops. a very big congratulations go to Jennifer Horrigan, who won the North Sydney Citizen of the Year Award this year. Jennifer received this award for her remarkable achievements as chairman of the national charity Red Kite. Red Kite is a very speci special organisation that provides support to children and young people with cancer and their families across Australia. They provide support from diagnosis all the way through to final treatment. Jennifer's personal efforts include making the Nat New York Marathon to raise money and awareness of Red Kite. Her current goal is to raise sufficient funds to support 42 Australian families this year. Oliver White was awarded the North Sydney Sporting Achievement Award for his dedication in becoming the 2019 Australian Cross Country Champion for the under 12 and 14 boys in the three kilometre race. Oliver showed great determination and grit by adopting a disciplined approach to training and always striving to reach his goal of becoming Australia's best. He is a fine young man. Stephen Jones received the North Sydney Older Person Award for his outstanding work for the charity, which he founded called Kids Like Brett, which supports children with Nezilov syndrome. Stephen's son suffered from this serious condition and he realised that more life-saving machines were needed and went on to raise more than $1 million for the Sydney Children's Hospital. And Community Group of the Year was awarded to the Special Olympics Dance Group. The group does outstanding work by providing children and young adults with an intellectual disability with the opportunity to dance, perform and put on concerts. This volunteer-run organisation meets every Saturday morning at Lane Cove West and provides the dancers and their families with a chance to catch up with peers, discuss issues and provide support to each other. I've had the opportunity to visit one of their Saturday sessions and the enthusiasm of the participants and the parents is obvious. These major category winners were joined by so many others representing our community, from the wonderful pink ladies who volunteer at Royal North Shore Hospital to individuals like the oldest winner, John Cran, who at almost 92 is still playing the bassoon with the Willoughby Symphony Orchestra. My special thanks go to Sebastian Robertson, chair and co-founder of Batir, who was our special guest and spoke about the, his important work reducing youth suicide, to Norse Club, who hosted the event, and last but not least, to Josie Ryan and Camaray Public School uh, Big Band, which provided wonderful music for the ceremony. Many thanks go to all the winners and their work for the community. Well, thank you, member. <coughs> I call the member for MacArthur. Uh, thank you very much, Mr Deputy Speaker. I rise today to uh, discuss a matter of great importance to many Australians, having recently been contacted by an understandably distressed MacArthur resident um, about the lack of av availability of EpiPen Junior. No, a quorum. A quorum has been called for those members. Um, the, this, the lack of the EpiPen Junior, uh, a life-saving medication, is greatly distressing to parents who have a child with severe anaphylaxis, including my own uh, son who has a, a daughter with uh, nut anaphylaxis. As members of this house ought to be aware, the EpiPen and EpiPen Junior are single-use devices that can be life-saving. Uh, indeed, over the years I've treated many patients from the MacArthur region who have relied upon the EpiPen in times of mortal danger. Uh, I cannot make this more plain to the House. The EpiPen is a life-saving device and lack of availability for children uh, for an EpiPen junior is greatly distressing to many parents. On further investigation, I've also noted there are many other medications that uh, are in very short supply in Australia, including amisulpride, which is an antipsychotic medication, metoprolol, a beta blocker used for cardiac disease and 
and other problems, including migraine. Some of the uh, newer statin medications, isoptamil used to control cardiac arrhythmias, syntocinon, which is used in obstetrics, lamictal, uh, uh, 200 and 100 milligram uh, capsules used in, uh, to control epi epi epilepsy. Some antibiotics, including clarithromycin, ranitidine, uh, an anti-acid medication, and some of the vital antiviral uh, medications, such as valcyclovir and famcyclovir, used to control uh, severe uh, viral encephalitis. Uh, there are some medications that, are, that their supply is being described as being critically important and in critical short supply, supply including adrenaline ampules, uh, metronidazole, an antibiotic used uh, to control gram-negative organisms, sometimes in the, in the worst kinds of sepsis, flucloxacillin, an anti-staphylococcal antibiotic, uh, meropenin, one of the new antibiotics used for multi-drug resistant uh, uh, systemic infections. These medications are all in short supply described as critical. These are life-saving medications. The Health Minister is very prone to want to politicise the PBS, but we have such severe supply chain difficulties in Australia that we have critical short supplies of many of these life-saving medications, and the Minister has done nothing about it. I myself have inquired of the Department of Health about uh, this critical short supply and have been previously reassured that all is fine, but in fact it's not. We have critical short supply of vital medications. The Health Minister is doing nothing. I thank the Mr. member Savage. for MacArthur. I call the member for Leica. Thank you very much indeed, uh, Mr Deputy Speaker. It's with great sadness I rise today to pay tribute to a friend and Cairns media personality who recently lost his battle with cancer. Russell Francis was a larrikin, family man and well-respected photographer had a long and illustrious career with the Cairns Post between the 1970s and 1990s. Russell was also a mentor and is known for taking young photographers under his wing to show them the ropes. It was, uh, if there was news to, that was happening in our region, you could bet Russell, a bottom dollar that Russell would be out there catch, catching the images for readers. Russell covered many of the biggest stories in our region during those years, the glory days, if you could say, and uh, when print was king. His images are not only displayed in the Cairns Post, but national and international publications. Russell covered the drama of the Daintree Rainforest blockade back in the 1980s when people chained themselves to trees and buried themselves in the path of bulldozers to prevent construction of the road. Pleasing uh, to see that those involved in the protest pay their respects to him on social media after learning of his passing. And it just goes to show the high esteem that Russell was held in by all of those who he came in contact with. Russell also was there when the tree set of Man uh, Manfred Stevens and the anti skyrail protesters opposed the construction of the 7.5 kilometre cable between Cairns and Coranda. Russell was there on the 4th of February 1987 when the students from the Cairns State High School, including my son, were returning from a school camp when the bus that were travelling crashed down the side of the Gillies Range. Eight students uh, were tragically killed in the crash, which also saw injuries to a further 32 students, two teachers and the driver. Outside of the hard news uh, story photographs, Russell also captured uh, visits from our region from celebrities and royals, including when the Duchess of York, Sarah Ferguson, and her children stayed at Badara Island. Outside of being in Newtown, Russell was a keen gardener and, and with rare and exotic fruit uh, enthusiasts. Russell was also an animal lover and was very heavily involved with the Young Animal Protection Society, or YAP, YAPS, as it's commonly known in Cairns. Mr Deputy Speaker, I had the absolute pleasure of knowing Russell when I was actually a crocodile farmer many years before I entered in the world of politics and he took numerous photographs of me unloading crocodiles caught up at Pomparao when I used to do crocodile shows at Wild World. Many of those pictures are displayed in my office here in, Can in Cairns and here in Canberra. Uh, Mr Deputy Speaker, you could not come across a finer and more respected person than Russell Francis. Sadly, he, he might have gone, but the images uh, he took throughout his career will live on for an eternity. Russell is survived by his children Aaron, Nathan, Brendan and Sarah and grandchildren Lillian, Aston, Ivy and Claudia, born the day before he passed away. Rest in peace, mate. I thank the member for Leichhardt. I call the member for Bean. Sorry. Thanks, thanks uh, Deputy Speaker. As we near the end of 2019, 
I'd like to wish everyone across Bean a safe and happy festive season and a prosperous 2020. The electorate of Bean, stretching from the deep space communication complex in the south to the National Arboretum, but not forgetting everything in between, or Norfolk Island, is a beautiful electorate. The real beauty, though, Deputy Speaker, is in the people that make our community work, from our schools, workplaces, sports clubs, unions and faith organisations, to our community councils, voluntary associations and organisations devoted to care and support. It has been an honour to work with you all in 2019. Christmas can be a difficult time, in particular for those who are disadvantaged and or separated from family. Just yesterday, my fellow Canberra Labor representatives and I hosted a barbecue to raise money for the work of St Vincent de Paul across our region and heard firsthand from volunteers on the pressure on services. The pressures arising from real cost of living outstripping pay and the inadequate level of new start are felt here in Bean as they are felt around the country. Deputy Speaker, I would like to recognise and thank those that work particularly hard over the festive season, from our emergency and care workers to those working in transport, retail and hospitality. How shameful then, Deputy Speaker, is it to reintroduce anti-worker legislation today on the cusp of Christmas? How shameful. Deputy Speaker, the beauty of our natural environment here in Bean and across the country provides a challenge over the hot summer months that is too apparent at the moment. Many families across Bean were affected by the devastating January 2003 bushfires and are conscious of the risks this summer. Already the pressures on our emergency services have been felt as they have helped their colleagues right across the region. It is critical that our emergency services personnel and the parks personnel that they work with are properly resourced right across the year. Deputy Speaker, across our retail and hospitality sectors, I would urge all in this chamber and, and the other house to embrace the SDA's No One Deserves a Serve campaign and treat retail and hospitality workers with respect and dignity over this busy period, as they should right across the year, Deputy Speaker. So, Deputy Speaker, on behalf of, of my wonderful team, Thank you to all in Bean for everything you have done in 2019 in making our community a much stronger and kinder place. And let's work together for a united Bean in 2020. I call the member for Calair. Thank you, Deputy, Deputy Speaker. Speaker. Yeah, you have a call. I move that the member be no further heard. Oh. It's how he just voted. It was his choice. He opened it up. Uh, I'll put the question. All those who are in, in favour of that say aye. 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 All those, aye. No, aye. no. I think the question's unresolved. Uh, <clears throat> in accordance with Standing Order 188, the question will be included in the Federation Chamber's report to the House. No. I know you don't have the call, I'm sorry, um, Member for Calair. I call the Member for uh, Mayo. Uh, thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. Last Friday, I attended the 2019 St Martin Adelaide Hills Wine Show, which featured uh, talented local winemakers, um, and it was held at uh, Bird in Hand Winery. Um, and I'd just like to acknowledge um, uh, many of the uh, winemakers who were there uh, on, that, on that day, and in particular, um, Michael Downer at Murdoch Hill. Um, Murdoch Hill took out 24 uh, trophies, uh, and, and so I congratulate uh, Michael Downer and Murdoch Hill. Uh, their winery is at Oatbank. Uh, and they took out top honours in the following categories. Best Shiraz, Best Chardonnay, Best Producer Under 100 Tonnes, Best Single Vineyard Sale, Best White Wine of the Show, Best Red Wine of the Show, and finally Best Overall Wine of the Show for their 2018 Chardonnay, known as The Rocket. 
There are numerous uh, winemakers in the electorate of Mayo who are finding um, success on both a national and international stage. Others include Jeff Hardy um, by Wines by Jeff Hardy and Don Tatino and Christopher uh, Farrell for, uh, who are at Hazel Grove Wines. Uh, they were finalists in the 2019 Australian Exporter of the Year Awards. And I caught up with Don and Christopher at the awards dinner last night and I look forward to visiting um, their cellar door very soon. Um, for many, um, success would not be possible without the assistance of the Australian uh, uh, Wine Australia's Export and Regional uh, Wine Support Program. Now, the program is set to come to an end on the 30th of June 2020, and I urge the government to uh, give some surety and extend the funding, um, and that will ensure that we have another crop of new winemakers able to benefit from the scheme. Um, South Australia's wine exports have hit $1.79 billion and now generate over $2 billion in revenue for South Australia. Um, in 2019, South Australia contributed almost 750,000 tonnes of wine grape crush, the equivalent of almost one third of the national um, crush. However, those figures um, could potentially uh, drop um, with respect to biosecurity hazards such as phylloxera, a tiny insect that destroys grapevines by feeding on their roots. Um, there are no eradication treatments for um, phylloxera. South Australia is currently phylloxera free, um, but we look, at the, we look to the Yarra Valley. Um, they um, potentially lost a billion dollars in crop. Um, this would be uh, devastating for South Australia, and we need a national plan and we need national leadership on this issue. And Mr Deputy Speaker, I just want to finish on one issue. The Adelaide Hills wine region is at risk um, by a, a potential approval by the state government um, for a gold mine that neighbours Petaluma Art, uh, Art Wine and Bird in Ham Wine. I want the South Australian community and Mayo residents to know that I support our wine industry because you can farm for generations, you can mine just once. I thank the member for Mayo. I call the member for Thank you, Deputy Speaker. You can't be heard. There's been a motion passed that you can't be heard. I'm sorry, the member for Clare. I, I call the member for Mallee. Deputy Speaker. <laughs> uh, the, do you have the call? Yeah. Uh, given what just happened in the House of Representatives, I move that the member be no further heard. Mr. Deputy Speaker, she hasn't had an opportunity to speak. She had the call. She had yeah. the call. No, 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 but, as soon as someone's got well, the call. Sorry, the, point, uh, point the member for North Sydney. The point of order, the procedure in the House is quite clear that a word has to come out of the Speaker's mouth before you can actually shut them down. And we had exactly this circumstance in the Chamber, yeah. uh, I think last week from memory. So he's uh, slightly premature, as he often is. Yeah. Well, I call the member for Mallee. I would like. Deputy Speaker. Yeah. You have the call? I move the member be no further heard. OK. We'll put the motion. All those in favour, say aye. 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 Um, the question uh, is unresolved in accordance with the Standing Order 188. The question will be included in the Federation Chamber's report to the House. I call the next speaker, which is the member for Fowler. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker. I take the opportunity. Yeah, the member for North Sydney. I move that the speaker no longer be heard. Uh, sorry. Uh, uh, you might like to correct that. <laughs> I move that the member no longer be heard. Speaker with a small I thank the member for North Sydney. We have another motion. The motion is that the member no longer be heard. Uh, all those in favour say aye. Aye. All those in favour? Against? No. I think the question is unresolved in accordance with Standing Order 188. The question will be included in the Federation Chamber's report to the House. Now, look, I might just add that this is going to uh, <clears throat> uh, make things very unorderly if we continue in this tit-for-tat manner. I call the member for Swan. The member for Watson knows he's being ridiculous, yes. absolutely ridiculous. Excuse me, the member for Swan. Leader Given of the that House. the member only moments ago voted for a gag motion, I move that he be no further heard. OK. We'll put the question. Uh, all those... Uh, the question is that the member no longer be heard. All those in favour say aye. Aye. Against? No. Okay. Uh, the question is unresolved in accordance with Standing Order 188. The question will be included in the Federation Chamber's report to the House. But I might add that uh, I 
think this is disorderly conduct and as such we'll um, uh, withhold the operations of the chamber for 15 minutes and uh, it will be resumed on return of the chair. Proceedings will now resume. I call the member for McMahon. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. Douglas William Bill Newell, OAM, was a friend of mine, but more importantly, he was a friend of my community. He died recently, and I want to pay tribute to him in the parliament. He was a veteran of the Royal Australian Air Force serving during World War II. He then served the community in the New South Wales Police Force, <coughs> rising to the rank of Detective Inspector at the Major Crimes Squad. Now, of course, he continued to give the community after retirement. Since 1995, he had held many positions within the Returned Services League and served as president of the Smithfield RSL sub-branch for 12 years until 2014. And it's in that capacity that I came to know him. And I would also want to take the opportunity, Mr Deputy Speaker, to say that my predecessor, the Honourable Janice Crozio, MBE AM, was a very good friend of Bill Newell's and he, she would want me to pass on her condolences in the House. Bill was a very, very good man and a good friend of mine. And he continued to live in the community uh, right up until his death. He lived at the Pemmelway Nursing Home. And uh, I was very pleased uh, to be able to call in and just chat with him from time to time at the nursing home and recall old times. I remember he told me about the time that uh, at the police station somebody arrived to brief him on the latest development in policing, the introduction of a computer, um, which he... Uh, <laughs> He said some of his colleagues thought wouldn't take on, uh, wouldn't, wouldn't take off, Mr Deputy Speaker, but he thought that the computer had some potential, uh, both in law enforcement and elsewhere. It was appropriate that he was awarded an Order of Australia Medal in 2015 in recognition of his service to veterans and their families, and I was very pleased to be able to write in support of his nomination for an Order of Australia Medal. He was particularly dedicated, Mr Deputy Speaker, to the commemoration of Battle for Australia Day. Now, Battle for Australia Day is a day, day now commemorated in many RSL clubs, but Smithfield RSL was the first in Australia to recognise Battle for Australia Day. It was the idea of another departed, now departed veteran, Mr Alex Pekin, who I've previously paid tribute to in his house, but Bill as president took it up. And Battle for Australia Day at Smithfield RSL is now a very important commemoration and is widely regarded within the RSL community as the third most important commemoration after Anzac Day and Remembrance Day, and it was first celebrated at Smithfield, or commemorated, I should say, at Smithfield RSL. His drive and enthusiasm made Battle for Australia Day. He was also very important in the Bowles community. In 2009, he was awarded a Meritorious Service Badge by the New South Wales RSL Bowles as a result of his dedication to the sport, serving as a National Umpire Secretary and eventually Treasurer to the local zone. I want to uh, pass on my condolences to his widow, Mim, of course, whom I know very, very well and um, who was his rock in his final years. His extended family. Um, I was pleased to attend his 90th birthday at Smithfield RSL three years ago. I'm sorry he's no longer misses, with us. I miss him every day. Our community misses him. Rest in peace, Bill Newell. Okay. I thank the member. I now call the member for Ryan. Thank you very much, Mr Deputy, Deputy Speaker. Speaker. The member for the uh, look, we've spoken about this before. The, the member opposite voted in the House of Representatives to gag Not another to member. Yeah. This is just Put returning the favour. Okay. Well, I think it's safe to end the same. Okay. Um, we have a motion before the House um, that the member no longer be heard. All those in favour? Aye. Against? No. The question remains unresolved. Uh, as the question is unresolved in accordance with Standing Order 188, the question will be now be included in the Federation Chamber's report to the House on the Bill. Now, um, members must be aware that I've spoken about this tit-for-tat serial um, moving of motions that members no longer be heard. I said it's disorderly. It remains disorderly. Under um, 187, uh, I now suspend the uh, business of the House and uh, adjourn, the Federation adjourn the Federation Chamber. 
uh, till 10 a.m. on Thursday, the 5th of December.